Hello, welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video and probably the next two videos, we're going to go over some AMC problems from the recent problem set on two variable Diophantine equations. Uh, as I had mentioned before, uh, in modern AMC exams, uh, the linear two variable Diophantine equation uh, almost never comes in, in undisguised form. It's usually uh, kind of disguised in one of several ways. And, and this is actually a good representation of one way that it's disguised in the form of a uh, money and change problem. So let's take a look at what we have here. So we want to have K be the number of ways that $10 can be changed into dimes and quarters with at least one of each coin being used. So essentially we're not going to consider the case where we have zero dimes or perhaps zero quarters. So let's try to translate that into mathematical terms. So we have dimes being 10 cents each. So 10 times the number of dimes is the value of dimes plus quarters, which are 25 cents each, times the number of quarters is equal to $10. And since we're working in cents here, it makes sense to convert the $10 to cents. And we're trying to solve for integers uh, d and q that are uh, greater than or equal to 1. Okay, and now uh, we're going to proceed from this point here, but if once you become familiar with solving two variable Diophantine equations, uh, you'll pretty much recognize, even at this point, that you're kind of home free, and, and that'll become clear as, as the problem progresses here. So one thing we first notice is that uh, we have uh, coefficients and the constant term on the right all divisible by 5, so step 1, let's divide out by that common factor of 5. And the next thing we notice is that uh, this is one of the more convenient uh, linear two variable Diophantine equations where at least one of the coefficients uh, on the left side divides evenly into the constant term on the right side. And in fact, both of these coefficients divide evenly into the right side. So we could proceed in one of two ways, and it really doesn't matter which one of these terms we bring over to the right side. So I'll choose in this problem solution to bring the 5q term over to the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. And now the next step is to uh, recognize the common factor between the 200 and the 5 and pull that out of the expression. And now uh, we have to uh, try to reconcile and match up uh, the factors on the right side and the left side of this equation. And what we notice is that the d variable has to pick up a factor of 5 and this term of 40 minus q has to pick up the factor of 2. And so I, I typically call this step uh, the step of identify the uh, ratio solution. This kind of uh, exercise of kind of grouping up the, uh, the factors on the left and the right side of the equation uh, is, is just sort of an identification step. So once you've identified how these factors can match up, we can write down what the, the ratio solution will look like. And it looks like follows. It looks like uh, the variable d can be written as some uh, multiple of 5, 5n, and that the, uh, the grouping 40 minus q can be written as some multiple of 2, 2n, where n is again, some integer, and uh, I typically call this step uh, form the ratio solution. Now once we form this ratio solution, we typically have to uh, rearrange it just a bit to make it a little more accessible. And for the Q, we'll bring it over and the 2N over to the other side. So that's 40 minus 2N. And now, looking at this, we can uh, realize that we, if we want to solve for d and q that are both greater than or equal to 1, that puts some constraints on the value of n. So in the case of d, we find that n can't be 0, it can't be anything negative. We find that n has to be 1 or larger. So let's write that condition down. And for the case of q, we want q to be positive as well. Um, and so we see that... Uh, 
n, uh, if it were to equal 20, would make it 0, and that's not something we want. So we need it to be 19 or 18 or 17 or anything 19 or below. So let's write that condition down, n less than or equal to 19. So I typically describe this step as uh, identify the n values to uh, satisfy the constraints on uh, d and q. So in this case, d has to be greater than 0, q has to be greater than 0. And then the last step, it's, it's pretty easy. We just have to basically look at the set of n, which satisfies both the first condition and the second condition. And at least from this case, it's pretty easy to see that uh, the n values we're looking for is n equal to 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 19. So essentially there are 19 values total. And uh, that leads to the choice E. And this last step I typically uh, describe as uh, identifying the n values that satisfy both of these conditions simultaneously. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. It follows this basic plan. And uh, we're going to see this basic uh, floor plan for uh, the problem solution probably uh, 8 out of 10 times in the AMC. So uh, anyway, join us for the next video, and we'll see you then. Bye.